The James Webb Space Telescope continues to bring us remarkable discoveries, once again reshaping our understanding of the cosmos. In a recent study, groundbreaking evidence has been unveiled regarding the existence of the earliest stars, stars that are incredibly massive, ranging from a thousand to a hundred thousand times the mass of our sun. To put this into perspective, even the most massive star known to us today is merely 250 times the mass of the sun. What's more, these colossal stars boast core temperatures that reach a mind-boggling 75 million degrees Celsius, a staggering five times hotter than our sun. As the James Webb Space Telescope gazes into the furthest reaches of the universe, it has identified indications of these monumental first stars in one of the most remote galaxies ever known to us. This discovery holds the potential to illuminate the very beginnings of our cosmos, unveiling the last uncharted chapter in the captivating story of cosmology. But let's delve into how astronomers have made this remarkable discovery. How have they managed to determine the mass of these extraordinary stars? And perhaps most importantly, how does this revelation help us comprehend the events that occurred when the universe was still in its infancy? To rewind a bit and provide context, the first billion years following the Big Bang remain a fascinating enigma, filled with unanswered questions that astronomers are relentlessly striving to unravel. During this period, the universe was incredibly dense and searingly hot, packing all matter and energy into a minuscule space. As it gradually cooled down, fundamental particles emerged, paving the way for the birth of various elements through processes like primordial nucleosynthesis. This led to the creation of deuterium, helium, and lithium nuclei, setting the stage for the formation of matter as we know it. Around 380,000 years after the Big Bang, as the universe continued its cooling journey, atoms began to form as electrons combined with the nuclei, a phenomenon aptly termed recombination. This marked a crucial moment as it liberated photons from the shackles of thermal equilibrium, rendering the universe transparent. This light emitted during this era now presents itself as the cosmic microwave background, or CMB radiation, a cornerstone of our understanding of the universe's early days. Following the CMB's release, an enigmatic epoch known as the Dark Ages commenced, a period shrouded in mystery where no stars or galaxies existed. Roughly 100 to 300 million years passed before clouds of gas collapsed, heralding the birth of the first stars and galaxies. These early stars' evolution unleashed energetic ultraviolet light and cataclysmic events like supernovas, which in turn, released various radiations. These processes heated the surrounding hydrogen gas, initiating the reionization of hydrogen and transforming the universe's landscape. Fast forward to about one billion years after the Big Bang, and the universe had evolved into a bustling realm teeming with radiant stars and galaxies. This rich tapestry of celestial objects painted a picture of an evolving cosmos. However, the exact timelines of the Dark Ages, the emergence of the first stars, and the epoch of reionization still remain subjects of intense research, shaping our understanding of the universe's chronology. Enter the James Webb Space Telescope, a marvel of astronomical technology that has opened new vistas into the early universe. With its unparalleled capability to explore uncharted portions of the sky beyond the reach of its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope, the JWST has revolutionized our journey into the past. Webb's observations have unveiled fully mature galaxies existing at astonishingly high redshifts, providing a glimpse into a universe only about 200 million years post-Big Bang. This revelation raises pivotal questions. What factors in the early universe catalyzed the accelerated evolution and growth of these galaxies? More intriguingly, when did the first stars truly emerge? Did they come into being around the 100 million year mark after the Big Bang? If not, what unique circumstances or characteristics of the universe facilitated the development of fully formed metal-rich galaxies in their nascent stages? Amidst the study of these high redshift galaxies, a paradigm-shifting idea emerged. This novel approach posed questions about the nature of the first stars and their role in the evolution of these distant galaxies. This innovative perspective paved the way for a transformative research journey, where the observations of the James Webb Space Telescope emerged as a critical tool, shedding light on the early universe's mysteries. The James Webb Space Telescope's significant observations centered on a distant galaxy, GNZ-11, nestled within the high redshift universe. GNZ-11 is a celestial marvel, one of the most remote galaxies we've encountered. Its light has traveled a staggering distance of about 13.3 billion years through the vast expanse of space to reach us. Notably, 
The Hubble Space Telescope had previously discovered GNZ-11 in 2016, yet the Webb Telescope brought a new revelation. When astronomers turned Webb's gaze upon GNZ-11, they uncovered something truly intriguing within its spectrum. The interstellar medium of the galaxy exhibited an unexpectedly high concentration of nitrogen compared to oxygen. This exceptional nitrogen to oxygen ratio, in fact, is around four times higher than what we observe in our sun and about 10 times higher than what's typically seen in nearby galaxies. So why does this nitrogen to oxygen ratio matter and what secrets does it hold? This ratio serves as a critical indicator of a star's chemical composition, offering insights into its origins and evolution. By analyzing these abundance ratios, astronomers can decipher the elements present in stars and gain clues about their age and core temperature. A famous example of this technique is the Great Dimming of Betelgeuse, a star that experienced a significant temperature drop, precisely measured by analyzing spectral lines of specific elements. To make sense of the high nitrogen to oxygen ratio in GNZ11, scientists turn to the concept of globular clusters. These are ancient gatherings of stars, dense and massive, formed during the early universe's primordial times. They exist in most galaxies, including our Milky Way. These clusters often harbor the products of explosive deaths of older stars which release heavy metals into their surroundings, enriching the interstellar medium and fostering new star formation. This phenomenon, observed in globular clusters within the Milky Way, was intriguingly investigated to see if it applied to high redshift galaxies like GNZ11. This exploration led scientists to consider polluter stars, particularly supermassive stars that can enrich their environment with heavy elements like nitrogen. The conditions necessary for nitrogen production involve fusion processes that take place at incredibly high temperatures. Characteristics found in supermassive stars ranging from a thousand to a hundred thousand times the mass of our sun. These stars are thought to form within globular clusters during the universe's early days, where accreting gas and collisions among stars result in their creation. Through in-depth investigations, a connection emerged between the abundance ratios observed in globular clusters and the high redshift galaxy GNZ11. This link suggested that these clusters and GNZ11 might share a common history involving these supermassive stars as polluters, enriching their surroundings with nitrogen. Another intriguing angle considered the possibility of wolf rayet stars, massive stars with strong stellar winds enriched with elements like nitrogen and oxygen. These stars could account for the high abundance ratios in GNZ11, particularly if they were rotating massive stars with winds rich in these elements. Observations from the James Webb Space Telescope have, indeed, ushered in new possibilities, casting light on scenarios involving supermassive first stars. This has considerably advanced our comprehension of the early universe and the mysterious nature of its earliest inhabitants. But the journey doesn't end here. Webb's keen eye has also unveiled evidence of dark stars, a phenomenon that adds another layer of complexity to the unfolding narrative. These dark stars, residing at the cores of proto-galaxies and fueled by the annihilation of dark matter particles, present a fresh perspective on the celestial stage. Dark stars differ from conventional stars in that their energy is derived from dark matter annihilation rather than nuclear fusion. They consist mainly of ordinary matter like hydrogen and helium with a trace of dark matter. As they grow, they accumulate matter from their surroundings, growing into supermassive dark stars with luminosities far surpassing those of normal stars. These enigmatic objects could even evolve into the supermassive black holes we observe in galaxies today. By scrutinizing the fluxes and spectral characteristics of high redshift galaxies, the James Webb Space Telescope has identified potential candidates for these dark stars. Key to differentiating them from regular early galaxies is the presence of a specific helium isotope absorption line. If astronomers detect this signature in the spectrum of any of these candidates, it would mark the dawn of a new era in astrophysics, opening doors to a deeper understanding of the origins of supermassive black holes and reshaping our perception of the cosmos. If you found this exploration of the James Webb Space Telescope's groundbreaking discoveries captivating, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with the latest insights into the mysteries of the universe. Join our community and embark on a journey of discovery together.